to be you. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is the Diana Wright Show Live. And we begin now. This is Wow Friday, Big Friday. Um, all the stories that I think are just crazy or wow over the, this past week. And my voice is getting better. And I am so happy to be with you this day. It is TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. But it is Wow Friday, and it is a day that we remind you, remind you, remind you that hope that you did what you were supposed to do this week, and that is to continue to say to yourself, I love me, and teach your children to love themselves so that anything that comes their way, they will be able to conquer it because they indeed love who they are. All right, I need to sling this over so <laughs> I have less strings hanging <laughs> from my headphones. But anyway, um, just wanted to reflect a little bit and ask you, do you have a dry place or a drought in your life? Okay, here comes Dax. And we're going to try to Skype him in if I can ever get this thing to go. Hi, Dax. How are you? Yes, you're good, and you are going to be joining us right about now. All right, okay, give me your levels as we go. Okay, all right, okay. All right, so I'm going to just um, put Dax on as he adjusts his head. I am not, you're cutting off a part of your head. <laughs> there you go, that's good, that's good, that's good. I'm going to put that shot up. All right. Good morning, Dax. How are you? Okay. Before we get to that, I'm going to just say something because I wanted to remind people of April 30th, which is International I Love Me Day, and also asking them, is there a dry place in your life today that you would like to look at? Is there a drought in your life and you actually believe that there's no hope for you, things are not going to get better, and all that kind of good stuff? Well, I'm here to tell you that the life of the person that you actually want is the life of uh, someone you could actually think that that person, that person actually might not be able to do what you can do at your best. So... How are you phrasing that in your mind? Because the person's life that you want, they might be so bad in the things that you're great at, but they just happen to be out there in front of the cameras. You can see them, but you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know what makes them unhappy or what makes them tick or what parts of their body they're unhappy with, or what part of their life they hate and all that. Everyone has a part of their life that they're not happy with. And I'm here to tell you that it is indeed, if you have a dry place and you have a drought in your life, you need to first begin to love yourself for who you are and then worry about other people. And you really shouldn't be worrying about other people. You should really just be thinking about you, what you want for you and your world. So as you open that gift, remember the boxes I told you that you should imagine or get for real? The gold box with the purple ribbon or the purple box with the gold ribbon. Open it each day because that is the gift that God is giving you for that day. Only one day at a time. You can't live in two days. You can't drive ten cars. You can't live in ten houses at one time. So just let's take it one step at a time. So the first step is to love yourself. Teach your children to love themselves and even your enemies, teach them to love themselves because maybe they will just be a better friend and a better person for your teaching. All right. So the first story we're going to start with today is actually a new story and I'm going to bring Dax in now because he's settled. <laughs> okay, Dax. Now, now he's settled. He's not, okay. Dax, I told you Dax is just like a little kid, you know, <laughs> he can't keep still. This is a story that I just think is really big and <laughs> it just kind of spooked me this morning that someone actually had the nerve to say it. And this is a lady in, in England called Isabel Dutton of Britain. She's 57 years old and she said this, her two children are like parasites. And having them was the biggest mistake of her life. 
<laughs> Don't laugh yet, Dax. <laughs> Dutton is a typist who wrote details of her regrets about having her two children, Stuart and Joe, in the UK's Daily Mail. The UK has a thing called Daily Mail, and you, you're allowed to write anything you feel in it, and it gets published, I guess, depending on how big it is. Isabella said, quote, My son, Stuart, was five days old when the realization hit me like a physical blow. Having a child had been the biggest mistake of my life. I felt completely detached from this alien being who had encroached upon my settled married life and changed it irrevocably for the worse. Dutton said she came to resent her children's neediness and the time spent doting on them that could have been used to reflect, to read, and enjoy her own company. She also wrote, quote, I knew there are millions or I know there are millions who will consider me heinously cold, blooded, and unnatural. But I believe there will also be those who secretly feel the same. Mm. And in the UK, a survey was taken, and the survey revealed that both men and women are likely to regret not having children and felt jealous of people with children. Okay, Dax. I just believe that she is correct. There are lots of parents out there who are secretly saying, I wish you could go back where you came from. Because they are so frustrated with that kid at that moment that they're thinking that. But then when they get back to their senses, they're saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I just thought that was so honest and so, because you remember, I, there was another father, I think, was it in the U.S. or the U.K. again, who said he, I think it was the U.K. or somewhere in Europe, who said he was tired of his kids sponging off of him and all they want is money, money. All they contact him for is what I want, I want, I need. <laughs> so I just thought that this was so brave of Isabella, 57-year-old, to say, look, I am just sick of this. I see your thinking. <laughs> No, Dutton, Dutton, not Dutton, Dutton, D-U-T-T-O-N. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, they are. Lots of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, five days. <laughs> Postpartum depression. Postpartum depression, yes. Mm Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> 
that's being very honest well I can clearly say that my daughter is pure joy <laughs> I mean and now especially now that she's 18 and becoming 19 she's finding you know trying to find her own voice and she she has the driest humor on earth you know like I sent my husband uh, a nice text I think it was a couple of days ago and she's like we're going down in the car the next morning she goes mommy I think you should send daddy those texts every day because he just looks like a different person <laughs> you know so she comes up with these things that you're not even expecting or thinking that, because I said how did you know she said I read your texts in your thing in your phone I said but I didn't give you permission to do so <laughs> You know, so if you ask her to send a text for you or respond to something when you're driving and you don't want to, she actually goes ahead and reads your business, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I think she's just pure joy. Yes, we had a great tragedy in our lives and almost lost her, but you'll hear about that in my book, Deadly Negligence. And But she has come back to be the same person, if not better you know so you gotta be grateful but then there were days when you know I, I think she was a newborn and you feel overwhelmed but I have never felt like that woman I just when she said parasites I was like oh my god you know parasites that's a terrible thing that I'm trying to detox from my body <laughs> yes mm-hmm Ooh, monsters <laughs> yes 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 so, so you know you never know but anyway I feel for Isabel Isabella Dutton in the UK we hope that she at 57 will find some peace because... <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> well no the grandkids are sometimes good because they come you enjoy them and they go they're not necessarily with you you know so maybe that will help her oh my goodness I just thought that was so crazy but anyway um, some other stories this one is uh, a new one that I I thought I'd bring out to you because I figured to myself there were <laughs> There were no black people in this list. <laughs> that kind of kind of got to me. Ten highest paid billionaire CEOs in the U.S. Richard Kinder. He's an energy transportation corporation person. He used to work for Enron. And then he created North America's largest oil and gas transportation company with 80,000 miles of pipeline. Pays himself $1 a year and went public in 06 but his compensation from the company is 1.1 billion dollars and you know as I went through the list I thought to myself what are these guys doing to get all this money <laughs> yes they came up with the company but what are they doing then we go to Daniel Ouch and he is an asset manager his compensation 289 million dollars went public in 07 Howard Schultz, of course, everybody knows him, the guy from Starbucks who went to Europe, um, saw all the cafes on the sidewalks and thought, whoops, this could work in America. I just got to use coffee because coffee is the thing that Americans drink mostly. And he is $118 million compensation. Leslie Wexner. Now, he is the guy that owns Limited, that boutique that we all shop at. It's now called L brands and it's just retail apparel compensation 58 million dollars Ralph Lauren the designer that we all know and love and I love his clothes to death 39 million dollars Larry Ellison a lot of you heard of Larry Ellison from Oracle that software business 37 million George Roberts asset manager 35 million Henry Kravitz as asset manager again the, the, you know these are these Wall Street guys and he's tied for 35 million and then of course there's Rupert Murdoch of Fox News entertainment and media is his business 23 million compensation and then finally but not least is the guy who owns FedEx Frederick Smith that's delivery of course compensation 22 million and I, I seriously ask myself what are they doing that we're not doing to make that kind of money seriously okay 
I want to hear. <laughs> okay. So what value can you and I create? We need to create value. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, in Jamaica and in London and other places in the Caribbean, yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Out. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. On some. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, I tell you what, when I started it in Jamaica, the Diana Wright Show in Jamaica, everyone except Edward Philip George Siaga, who was our prime minister, he was the only one who believed in my dream. I'm telling you, because he was the only one who said, okay, here, call this guy from Shandy and tell him I sent you and let him sponsor the show. And they did. And, and and I I actually I didn't even have an appointment when I went to Mr. Siaga's office at the time. I just got dressed up in my best suit and took my resume and my little tape and everything, even though I knew he didn't have a place to play the tape. I took it with me anyway, and I spoke to him. I I got there, and the the the, the, the receptionist said, "Oh, Mr. Wright, you don't have an appointment," because they had known me by then, because I did. You know, I was an anchor, a newscaster. So I did that, and I was a news director. So they knew me. And I said to her, well, I don't have an appointment, but, you know, can you just squeeze me in, please? And I literally begged her. And then she did. And Mr. Siaga came on and saw me at the window and said, oh, Diana, come on in, come on in, you know. And when I sat down and I told him what I was planning to do, and I told him, everybody's saying, oh, well, you know, Jamaicans are not going to talk about their business on, on the TV and this and that, and, you know. And he was like... Don't listen to them. Follow your dream. And this is what I'm going to do for you. And he was like, don't give up, whatever it is. And I could not believe it. And I thought to myself, you know, a lot of people see this guy as prime minister and think he's this hardcore, mean guy. And I found the, the part of him that I needed to push me. You know, and I to this day, I thank him. Until this day. And I come and I start this again. And here you are to come on with me and, you know, talk and encourage your people to watch and, you know, everybody's doing their little bit. 
So, yeah, you know, so that's what I'm saying to people. Don't give up on your dream and whatever you have to do to get to that dream. And I, I tell you what, I have a plan for the book when it comes out too. I'll tell you that secretly when the book comes out. I have a plan to approach someone again to get that book into a movie. Because, you know, it, it's just about doing what you feel you need to do to get your dream out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, who is calling Dax now? Someone is calling Dax and I told them do not call Dax between the hours of 10.30 and 11.30 and 11.45 when he is on the show with me. So we wait for Dax to come back with his comment. But also, I just want to remind you guys that tax time is up on you. Remember now, it's tax time and the 15th is coming up. I hope they're not changing the date this year again. You know, sometimes they kind of switch it around, give it another day or whatever. So if you haven't filed your taxes yet, you need to get up off your rumpus and go file your taxes. And don't forget to make sure your name is spelled right, all your deductions are in, your address is correct, and make sure everything is good and hoping that you're not going to be like that woman who went online and realized that someone else was filing her taxes for her instead of her she filing her own taxes so Dax is back with us now okay Dax you were saying go ahead <laughs> mm-hmm mm -hmm. okay you're having a little trouble with your sound there Dax Mm -hmm. Yes, that's better now. Okay, that's good. Mm. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm Exactly. Uh huh. <laughs> mm hmm Exactly. All right, um, we have, I have some things here that I, on my way home, dropping off my daughter at school this morning, I'm listening to Bloomberg, which I do every morning, and CNBC, and I'm listening to these guys who, the banks, Wells Fargo for one, and JP Morgan, they're making money, making profits. So why is it that the banks are too big to fail still? And also, where is a bailout for homeowners? are still underwater while these guys are flourishing again and too big to fail still what is going on there I mean and also to add to that they're telling people oh it's a good time for first-time home buyers to buy a house right now <laughs> where do you come down on any of those things mm-hmm Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm 
Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Mm. Amen. <coughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm there with you. <laughs> Just want to remind people that we're talking to Dax Dunn. It's Wow Big Friday. And we, of course, get his opinion. Just like CNN does, they have a gang of three or four people that comes in and gives their opinion on the various headlines. We do it here, too. <laughs> but we also preach love, love and more love for you and yourself and your children and your family. Because when it comes down to it, that truly is what matters. And when you're thinking that that other person's life is so much more wonderful than yours, check the things that you can do that they really can't do. <laughs> okay? Just check that. <laughs> mm hmm. All right. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I know that. And I'm telling you, if there is anyone who wants to come and inspect my life, you can. It's open for you to see. And I, one of the things, you know, I was noted for in Jamaica is I tell everything. Because I don't want you to go find out any secrets about me. Anything you want to know, just ask. I'm here to tell you. I, I have nothing to hide about anything. Okay? So that's one of the things I really say to people. The life you speak about is the life you should be living. And not the, the life that you want to create for yourself. All right, and that's the reason sometimes my husband and my daughter and my mom would say, hey, you go and stalk all of our business. <laughs> I'm like, well, because I don't want him to come and ask or find out. I just want to tell them first. <laughs> yes, I haven't read it though, but I've heard about it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. All righty. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. Is everything all right? <laughs> Exactly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
and I tell you what, even though Usain Bolt might be the fastest runner in the world, I promise you, if you check his life, well, he's a bad driver. We know that because he's crashed many cars. <laughs> so we do know that. So, and maybe you are a good driver. Check it out. I mean, he's had how many accidents? I think two so far. So, you know, and wrecked a couple cars. <laughs> I, you know, I'm sure you don't want that for yourself. You know, Jay Z, as a young man, shot his brother and went to prison for it. Eh? Would you like that part of his life? No, you don't. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, who is always, you know, on the tube, she is unhappy as they can come with her weight and her body. I can tell. I know. I see it. I don't have to know her to know that. She says it, basically. You see what I'm saying? So the things that the people that we see and we try to emulate, we really have to look into that to understand that their life is not perfect. My life isn't perfect. Dax's life is not perfect. We all have our down days and our up days. But I tell you what, when I'm up, I make sure I am enjoying the up to the fullest. As my mom always tells me, when your id is up, just take advantage of that id <laughs> and don't let it go. Also, um, I was reading a couple of articles about getting married young, and I thought that was quite interesting. Would you be okay if your son wants to get married at 23? Or your daughter? Oh, wow! Mm. Wow! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. 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 Wow. I gotta check. I gotta check Rachel on that. <laughs> I gotta check your wife on that, Did Rachel on that. <laughs> Did you ever make her cry? <laughs> what? Uh, everything, yes, yes. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of that. I cry watching a movie. I'm, I'm, my, my daughter's going, Mommy, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Okay, our special guest inside of the Diana Wright Show this morning is Dax Dunn, and we is it is Wow Friday, Big Friday, and we welcome you from around the world and in the United States. Of course, if you'd like to call Dax when he's not on here, you could call him at 866, I have to use my bottle, 786-3617, that's 866-786-3617. And that's Rad Wellness. You can give Dax a call. And by the way, Dax, I am I only have two more pounds to go. So I'm doing great. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know lots of you out there are jealous, but I don't really care. Because one of the things you said about the four agreement, I used to worry when I just started the Diana Wright show in Jamaica, what people were writing about me, what they were saying about me, and oh, some of the women were real evil and mean. And I know it was because they were jealous because they didn't think of it and they didn't do it. But after a while, a friend of mine who used to help me out with the show, and she also did my hair, Pat Wright, she said to me, have you considered this? I said, what? If you were not important, they would not be talking about you. <laughs> and if you were not a star, they would not even be bothered with you. What is your problem? <laughs> And that kind of snapped me out of it. And until this day, I can tell you, what people say about me, I just kind of, hmm, who cares? <laughs> you know? Anyway, let's get back to the article about the 23-year-old getting married. One of the things I 
I kind of reflected about getting married that young because I'm one of those people who believe that in your 20s, you're still stupid. You're not supposed to be getting married to anyone. And one of the things I wrote in the article, the young lady who got married at 23 and her husband was 25, she said that it, it taught them to grow together when they one lost their job, you know, the other one supported them. One was an attorney and one is, they're both successful people. But she feel that when you get married young, you actually learn to grow together. But then the other side of the coin, one person said, your first marriage is just teaching you how to grow and then you get a divorce and marry somebody else and you're better. <laughs> so that, you know, I, I just kind of found that, those two thoughts in the article very interesting. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, how, how do you compare the difference how you feel about your daughter as opposed to your son? In terms of you know them tying the knot then with someone. And that's a good thing. Okay, let's see. Let's see someone calling to crucify us. Okay, hello. Uh, no sound. There's no sound from Dax. There's no sound from Dax? Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting because I have him coming through here. My meters are showing sound from him. Okay, Dax, speak up. Yeah, I have him on my meter coming up. So I'm not quite understanding why that is. Okay, all right, Dax. Any better? Are you hearing him now? Go ahead and speak, Dax. Any better? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. Oh, yes, I can hear him. Okay, yeah. thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Okay, Dax, I don't know. So, I was, I was talking about marriage. Yes, go and, ahead. And, and I was explaining that, you know, I, I think marriage is just marriage. Isn't There's no good or bad marriage. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just the people that are in the marriage and how they behave. So, you know, if, if, if the two people at a certain age are those types of people mm -hmm. that, that they, they don't have the family support at home, they, 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 they found a, a soulmate, mm -hmm. somebody who understands them, who is able to support them in their own growth. I think one of the most important things about marriage is, besides love, is the ability to grow together. That, that if you see where you want to be in life and this person shares that vision, then I think no matter what the age is, get married. Because really? there's no guarantees. Wow. 21? I don't know. You're brave. You did it and it lasted for quite a bit, a long time. So I guess, but I... I don't know. I would not want my daughter to get married at 21. <laughs> that's just me. That's just me, okay? And, and, and that's based on your protection, protecting her. Uh, yes, okay. From but the pain. What, what, are, what are you protecting her from? Because I, 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 let, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit, you know, thinker. I'm saying, is she going to date? Well, she hasn't started yet, and, and she's only 18. Right, but but I'm saying at 21, uh -huh. would it be okay for her to date? Well, it depends on where I see her growth in maturity, I think. Diana. You're <laughs> okay, that, now, Dax is going to school us now. Go yeah, ahead, Dax. A 21-year-old woman, mm -hmm. you are saying you would, you would 
limit her ability to date? Well, if you, when you read the book, you will see why I would do that. Okay? When, when the book comes out, Deadly Negligence, you will see why I would do that at 21. And I'm not going to give it away right now. Okay? So, uh, w when you read the book, I'm going to make sure you get the first copy. So you can actually read it, and then when you come on, you can say, Okay, sure. Diana, I understand. All right. Okay, is that it's, fair enough? It's my pleasure. But, but here's the point I'm making is that, that, that we're going to be pain and hurt in our life, mm -hmm. whether we're married or not. Well, we're true, yes, I, I get that. Heartbreak, disappointment, you know, and, 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 and love in general. So we, we can avoid it. What we have to be able to do is figure out, guide them in terms of what is really going to be in their long-term best interest. But if she's that type of person, you, if you find a nice young man, <laughs> he if, like I found, <laughs> huh? if I found, if I found, for her, for her, I know, I know. Of course, I'm, I'm not you going and look for him, but I'm saying if this guy shows up in her, you know what? And you see that he has her best interest at heart mm -hmm. and he wants to to be with her to take care of her to make a life with her and he proposed mm -hmm. i think it, it's something to seriously consider okay something serious to consider that says <laughs> anyway um you know in that vein i think i'm gonna go to the next story here no i i can't get to that yet this is a big one there's a Roman Catholic um, nun who was a nun for 50 years and she was stealing money from the churches that she had to deal with to the tune of $128,000 to satisfy her gambling habit. <laughs> uh, did you get that? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't hear you. Okay, um, she is... She was. She is a nun. She has been in the nunnery for 50 years, but she was a gambler. So what she did is she robbed the church of $128,000 to suffice her habit. Okay, I think Dax is, we're having some technical issues with Dax, but anyway, let me continue here with something, and I just want to, I just want to remind people now that um, what it is right now is that they are there are five countries in the world actually that actually hates America and who are they Pakistan 80% of the people in Pakistan they don't like Americans okay here he comes again well you know these things happen when you're trying to do a live show and it's not recorded there you go Dax are you back with me are you trying to be back with me <laughs> I'm not hearing you at all anyway um, Pakistan 80% of people in Pakistan hate America Palestinian territories 77% in Algeria 67% Lebanon 64% and of course there's Egypt I thought North Korea would have made the list but North Korea didn't make the list because in all these countries we are giving them money we're giving them money and I don't know okay docs you are not coming in today I don't know what's going on but anyway I think we're gonna have to let Dax call on the phone so we I think he's having a little problem with his video okay so we'll just do that alrighty um, just also um, some other stories that I wanted to cover today and that is this one about 25 ways to say I love you so I, I, I started to approach them yesterday and when I approached them it was about kissing three times and this lady saying that her husband goes in his truck and he flashes his lights three times that's also something one husband irons her clothes and that makes her believe that he loves her or that is their signal to say that they are in love with each other okay here is Dax again Dax are you back can you hear me now I can hear you okay great so there you are 
I was just going through a list of things that um, I read in a very good article about things that people use in their marriages to say that they love each other. Yes. And kissing three times uh, and setting off their emergency lights on his truck when he's leaving for work three times indicates I love you. One, yeah. hu one husband irons her clothes and, you know, she loves it. One person leave cards saying how much I love you and appreciate you under the pillow. Another person, this one I thought was pretty cute, making banana pancakes every Sunday morning and cleaning up all the dishes before I awake, keeping them warm in the oven. Who do you think said that, a man or a woman? Huh? A man. A man? A man. No, 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 no. It's a yeah. woman who said that her husband does all of that every Sunday right. morning for right, her. Right, right, right. I'm saying I, 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 the person, a woman do that, Every 70% of women do that for their families because they love them, but it becomes special when a man does it. <laughs> ah, see now. So, m men, okay, start making breakfast and washing up the dishes. Do not leave the kitchen in a mess. Because a lot of women, men, when they cook, you know, it's wonderful. But my God, there's dirty dishes everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I definitely do the dishes once in a while. Once but, in a while? But my thing is rubbing the feet. Okay. Oh, you're a footman. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't love rubbing the feet, but I love her, so I rub her feet. Okay. All right. That's wonderful. Let me go to another one here. It says, having a code, blowing kisses at each other. Uh, he blows kisses when he goes upstairs or from another room to me, and that indicates that he loves me. S there, here's one now. Speaking in codes when you're, um, you know, when you're out, like you push your knee together with the next person so they know that either shut up or let's go or something. Right. <laughs> That's another one. Here's another one. My husband puts toothpaste. This one I thought was unusual. Put toothpaste on my toothbrush and leaves it lying on the sink every night before he goes to bed so I can have it on my toothbrush in the morning. Who does that? Seriously. Okay, another one here. Always on my mind, leaving text messages, <laughs> letting me know she is thinking of me. Now, I like that one. It's not what you she writes, it's just the thought that she was thinking about him during her busy schedule. So I like that one. Here's another one. He wakes up at 5.30, so he pulls out the drawers in the night and leaves them out so he doesn't disturb <laughs> me in the morning. I, you know, I was like, oh, my God, this must be just white people. Okay. <laughs> okay, number 10. I, I don't need, need to offend my white friends that are watching. I just think that, you know, I don't know any black person out there that does that. <laughs> Why not just take out the clothes and put them in, you know, rather than leave the drawer? Exactly my point. Okay, here's another one. We leave notes and um, hand-drawn pictures for each other on whiteboards in the kitchen before leaving for work every day. Well, that one is cute. Here's another one. He places love notes in her underwear drawer, sometimes racy ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is Friday. We need you to laugh and be happy, okay? In Absolutely. the in the winter, I um, start my okay. She leaves the house, go into his truck, and she warms up his truck so that when he gets in there to drive, it is nice and cozy. Okay, I mean, wow. Because okay. she she stays home in the cozy house, so at least she can go send him off to work. Okay, all right. Here's this one now. He leaves folded towels in the bathroom for me, so when I take a shower, it's there for me. He leaves one big towel for my body and one small towel to wrap my hair. I thought, wow, honey child, you got it made in the shade. <laughs> okay, Here's, I hope my husband is listening. Okay, all right, here's another one. My wife make, uh, makes... Uh, <laughs> Okay, she makes makes out in anywhere, she, even in the supermarket. 
grocery. Even in the supermarket, she would jump up on the cart and try to kiss me and all that kind of stuff in the store <laughs> to make me know that she is in the mood for love. Okay, I, I guess a lot of men would probably like that one. I'm not so sure. Okay, here's another one. We send short emails to say, I love you. That's a good one. Here's one. We squeeze hands if we are in a pri public place just to say, I love you. That's one. I like that one. Okay. My husband sets my bath with candles, bubble bath, and lock out the kids out of the master bedroom so I can relax. Now that one is really good. And then he always has a nice dinner waiting along with the bath. Okay. I am vegan and my husband who cooks most of the meals he makes sure that he separates the cooking utensils so he doesn't mix up the ones with the meat and the vegan to please me. Wow, I thought that guy is really good. <laughs> okay, for each of every four of my pregnancies, the only thing I could eat and keep down was yummy peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And do you know what my husband did? He made them every morning and I would wake up and see a stack of them with a glass of milk on a plate waiting for me. Now, isn't that sweet? Wow. Okay, here we go. She will fax letters for me. This is a husband now. When he's out of town, his wife faxes letters for her, leaves it with the bellman, and when he gets up in the morning, he will see those letters on the door, and it makes him feel loved. Okay, there's this couple now. This was a black couple, okay? One black couple. They said, we say magnificently across the room or anywhere we are in a crowd. And that is our code word for saying, I love me or I love you. Okay. Before he goes to work, he sets the table, put my cereal, orange juice and strawberries and a napkin and a spoon when she travels. That's one, you know. So he does all of that before he goes to work and she's still sleeping. When she travels for work and comes home, I give her a gift for every day she was absent from home, leaves them on the table in the kitchen and wait for her to see them. And the last one, we tell each other what we are grateful for every night. I like that one. But I think most men are falling asleep so they don't have time to tell you what they're grateful for. <laughs> Okay, that was meant for people to just have a good laugh, okay? Alrighty. <clears throat> I'm going to go to this one that I thought was really good because a lot of people who are older believe that they can't find a job because they're over 55. Now, workers over 55 are being sorted out, seeked, looked for by companies. And even at Home Depot... They're saying that people who come into Home Depot are looking for the over 55 people because they figure they have more knowledge and they can teach them things about fixing things in their house. As a matter of fact, they even quoted a young man who is a plumber, licensed plumber who works for Home Depot. He's 26. He's complaining that all the, 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 worker, the people who come into the store don't want to listen to him because they say he's only 26 and he doesn't know anything. <laughs> So, if you're over 55, wow, there is hope for you to get a job. It might take you 47 weeks to put, you know, beat that pavement, but you will find the job because companies like CVS and all those other companies are actually looking for you. Home Depot, for but, one, is looking hold for you. Hold on, but you know, Diana, one thing we also have to do is, is, is let those people remember that 55 is 55 years of experience. Uh-huh, and that's why I they love them now. At least 35 of those years you've been an adult and even if you were in school, mm -hmm. you were learning something. If you were working, you were learning something and you need to realize that that's a value mm -hmm. and you have to figure out how can I translate that value into something that people can recognize and are willing to compensate me for. And you'd be surprised. I, I, I actually, i give you an example. Mm -hmm. Let's say you, 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 over the last 50, 30 years, you realize that relationships, you always are caring, you're a supportive person, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. 
it don't mean that you have to become a relationship counselor you know <laughs> to, 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 to live that dream it mean you could be a janitor mm -hmm. at school but you give the kids the attention of knowing their names of really understanding the parents and the, 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 the staff and different people and their interaction mm -hmm. it could mean that you're a mechanic and you organize yourself based on the relationship of the tools and the parts and the system mm -hmm. and it's, it's really understanding that it's not about your vocation it's right. about your your, your 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 passion is about you you know understanding that you have a purpose and the purpose is not always manifested in you know a job it, it can be something you have to know bring to the job amen all right bring to the job here's another um, one that was wow for me a New York cardiologist with offices on Fifth Avenue and in New Jersey admits he intentionally misdiagnosed 80% of his patients with heart problems and collected so he could collect millions of dollars in the tune of 19 million dollars from Medicare the doctor Katz he is 68 he was born in um, in the US but I guess he's of Cuban parents and he decided also that he would create a fake person in his office so that he could cheat Social Security out of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars now is that greed or is that just stupid which one is it <laughs> I'm seriously thinking about that one which one do you think that that is Dax which one is that I think that guy is actually insane greedy whatever adjective you want to put to him we will see how it turns out and you know I think Dax Dax needs to set up his own studio in his house because he's having too many technical issues <laughs> where I have to dump him <laughs> and then bring him back each time so that's one of my wow stories for the week this guy 68 year old Dr. Jose Katz couldn't he have found another way do some more surgeries don't tell people that they have heart disease and angina and they don't and they go home and they worry about this and they are there thinking about how am I gonna take all this medication and you're giving people medication for something that they really don't have that is just simple insanity in my opinion okay another world story for me this week was the um, the after the pill that you the morning after pill I think that is not particularly good news for young people because I think that's just encouraging them to go and have sex because they figure okay if I think anything happened I just go and take the pill afterwards so those that, that, that's one story just kinda moved me the wrong way I think alright so that's one there also <clears throat> did you know that girls are actually getting Botox injections in their twenties yes we found that out this week also if you have a 20 year old please advise them not to have Botox at 20 years old it's not a good thing alright don't forget that this is something poisonous you're putting into your system yes it freezes the wrinkles and you don't have the lines here anymore or you might not have the crow's feet around your eyes but that muscle will not be able to move again <laughs> so you wanna keep that in mind okay alrighty the next wow story for me was parents in Massachusetts who actually were outraged because their kids were not allowed to have lunch at school because their account was not up to date with money or they did not have money to pay now the children are entitled to milk and a cheese sandwich they didn't get that either this happened in Massachusetts so make sure your kids when they're going to school they have, have extra money in their pocket just in case you forgot to replenish their account so they don't go hungry because this is really a bad thing yes we understand that the the, the, the the gentleman who did this was suspended and all that kind of stuff but it shouldn't get to that place where someone has to be suspended for preventing a child from having a meal at school and you know how hungry these kids can get okay here's my other wow Michelle Obama she people were getting on her case because she said she's a busy single mom okay Dax is back alright Dax you're back so here we go 
I think you missed a few. Well, the, the one I'm on right now is Michelle Obama. Michelle. Pe people are on top of her because she said that she's a busy single mom. And then she caught herself and said, no, he's here. <laughs> and then she had to go back to her Chicago days and say, well, you know, before we got to the White House, I was the one doing the driving, this and that, and he was never there, blah, blah, blah. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's life. It's life, and and and, and you know, <laughs> men men traditionally are, you know, the, they go out to bring it in to the thing. They go, you know, on these, you know, <laughs> expeditions. They, they Christopher Columbus, you, you know, they go to war. They go to, to you know, a a a a a quest to, to find meaning in their life. The exploration and 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 so. Um, women will find alone from time to time, but mm -hmm. it's, it's what do you do in the lifetime that you know they come men come back and they they they, 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 they address the address and you find that balance. It's not about having that perfect life. It's mm -hmm. about understanding the stages and phases that we go through in life and being able to support each other through those processes. For for example. I know that I was not prepared when my wife had children. Wow. That I didn't understand how many things would change. Mm -hmm. It was just, oh, yeah, a baby going to come, but I didn't realize <laughs> the sex would be so different. Yes. The attention would be so different. Mm -hmm. Your role in that relationship changes dramatically. Mm -hmm. And as, as a man, is something that not only for my kids but I, w I would I would go out of my way mm -hmm. to help young people to really start being more conscious of these things and not in a way to say don't do it mm -hmm. but in a way to say prepare yourself of what will happen and, and that you can manage it as it comes to you and some husbands I'm here to tell you do get jealous of the baby some husbands do get jealous of their children my, my, my take from, from that, because the, the baby now becomes the center of attention, and he's not getting any attention. Right. And one of my takes from the whole Michelle Obama thing is that, imagine, he made her into a first lady, because it's his drive and his thrust that made him president, and then she's a first lady. And yes, a lot of people are looking on and probably feeling jealous of her, but look, she's having her own issues just thinking about the fact that she has to manage these girls on her own okay well, some people say it, oh her mother's there to help her out and all that kind of stuff but she also has her own personal issues and you in you know why it was so much you have all the staff and support exactly. and it's still, it's still life and it, it just goes to the point that we were making about those billionaires mm -hmm. that you know the, the, all the money in the world mm -hmm. listen listen would you really want to have five five staff maids running around your house all day long? No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> huh? Absolutely not. <laughs> exactly. So, so it is is that balance between yeah, the house clean, mm -hmm. but. We do like our own privacy and having our own space. So w w when you have two houses, mm -hmm. you have a house in Florida and you have a house in California. Mm -hmm. When you're over in California, Florida. Okay. Dax, you're frozen in time and in speech. So we have to um, unfreeze you. <laughs> there you are now. You're unfrozen. <laughs> Speak. But no, as I said, the point is everything has a price. Mm -hmm. and, and when we talk about price, the price is not always about the money. It's mm -hmm. about the time and energy that it takes to do certain things. I have watched presidents come and go, mm -hmm. and I see all of them look like the age Tremendous. tremendously gray here everything wrinkles <laughs> right and, and, and it can't be you know just just fun and games it must be a lot of pressure i think from you from the after you take the oath of office there's certain information that i'm sure with you that when you hear it you you, 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 you age <laughs> you don't start get old yes you know? 
Agreed, agreed, agreed. Here's one, another one um, that I thought was it would be something that you would want to, um, you know, think about. Because they were saying there are 10 ways that people have gotten wealthy despite the fact that what they are inventing or doing has been done before. Because a lot of us believe, okay, there's yogurt out there. Tons of yogurt. But look at the guy. His name is Handy Yulukaya. He's a Turkish immigrant and he's a billionaire. And he did it in eight years with what? A yogurt called Chiobani? Everybody's buying Chiobani. <laughs> I don't know if you know the yogurt, but I'm telling you, it's, it, it, I have had it. It tastes very good. It tastes different from all the yogurts you've ever eaten. But... How many other companies are out there making yogurt? And he did it. And you, men you mentioned the, Star the, the Starbucks guy before, mm -hmm. you know. And, and the truth is, there, there's not a lot of new things to invent. There, there is the same old basic human needs. It's mm -hmm. only what we innovate. Mm -hmm. That's different. Okay, there's a, a, another young lady called Tori Birch. And she... Ballet flats. Can you imagine? She became a millionaire by selling those flats for a hundred and ooh, a hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Okay, one hundred and ninety-five dollars. That's how she got wealthy doing this. The guy who did the shopping malls, and there are so many other ways that people get wealthy that we wonder what is it that is your idea? What is your passion? Please find it this day. And make sure you don't listen to those crazy people who are telling you you can't achieve it. Because you can. You can, you can, you always can, and you will do this. Because it's important for you to do it for yourself. All right. I also was thrilled and kind of had a chuckle when I realized that, you know, my, my dearly beloved William, Prince William, got snubbed by a four-year-old. <laughs> when he tried to kiss her, she moved her face. <laughs> And then he had to blow her a kiss. And then he felt a little embarrassed. So it tells you, even royalty. Look who he is, Prince William. And he got rejected by a four-year-old, no doubt. And Beyonce and Jay-Z, who thought they went to Cuba and they were not going to be noticed. I don't know why they thought that. And why they didn't think that the Cubans who are fighting for freedom would not be mad with them. I don't know why they thought that either. So, there you go. Those are some of the things that I just thought was very important for the week. The next big thing for me was the fact that I found out that there are different sizes of penis depending on where you are in the world. Increíble, I thought. Okay? So, here we go. And then, when you go to places like um, Brazil, women are putting in things in their butt to make their butts bigger. Wow, I thought that was incredible for me. And also, the men with the smallest penis are those who are Asian. The ones with the longest and biggest one, 7.21 inches, they're from the Republic of Congo. I, we started discussing that with, uh, with uh, Dr. Melanie on Tuesday. So we're going to go back to those things. And why is it that French men who are so romantic... Their French women don't think they're that great in bed because of the size. So, lots of stuff to think about next week when we have Dr. Melanie on Tuesday evening. And on Tuesday morning, we're going to have Dr. Ricketts, Minus Ricketts, who are going to, we're going to talk a lot about education. And, you know, she's a real good resource for anything that has to do with education. And she has her doctorate. So, she will try to kind of give you a little guidance Sorry, we apologize for all the technical difficulties today, but you know, that's what it is when you're doing something live. It's not recorded and you run it and it goes all smooth because that's just the nature of things. And if you're over 40 and you're trying to fi you know, fight fat in your life, they're saying you should eat lots of chili peppers, grapefruit, non-fat ricotta cheese. It builds your muscles. Who knew? Bell peppers, it provides you with lots of vitamin C. Romaine lettuce gives you vitamin A. Nuts, ones that are in the shell, not the ones that are otherwise shown to you. So all the nuts that are in a shell, and I kind of squeeze cashew nuts in there because, you know, cashew comes out of a nut. 
of a casing and then it has that meat at the bottom so I kind of pushed it in there they didn't mention it but I did because I, I'm a cashew addict melon is also good and canned salmon did you know that canned salmon actually has the same amount of nutrients as salmon that you buy fresh from the market uh, edamame uh, edamame however they pronounce that one I see it in the store I've never tried it if you've tried it they say it's great for you and of course dark, um, chocolate who loves chocolate I do everybody does is there anyone that hates chocolate well dark chocolate is actually good to fight that fat when you get to 40 years old and you think you're getting old you're not getting old Ooh, you're not that old at 40 40 is a new 20 look at it look at those 20 year olds some of them look older than you and you're 40 anyway time to jump out of here just want to remind you of one of my big quotes for the week dance like no one is watching love like you'll never be hurt sing like no one is listening and live like it's heaven right here on earth and when you open your box each day the gold or the purple box whichever color you choose they're both colors of power and royalty look in that box that box represents what comes out of it is the gift that God is giving you for that day so we would love for you to get a box or imagine a box and don't forget to say I love me every single day as you go about your day and teach your children to love themselves it's important it's vital it makes you feel valued it makes you feel important it makes you feel cherished and April 30th is International I Love Me Day likewise I would like you to keep that in mind circle it on your calendar and of course Wednesdays is what we call Wellness Wednesday so if you'd like to call Dax and his number is 866-786-3617 that's 866-386-3617 lots of sixes <laughs> to get you going if you want to try the detox I tell you I only have two more pounds to lose I'm off the plan but I'm just kinda keeping the guidance of the plan eating small portions only eating when you're hungry you know making sure you eat only a fruit in the morning until 12 noon afternoon you can eat your proteins and your other things and then when you're going to bed make sure you're not eating a whole big meal to go to sleep with because your body needs time to rest and re restored so thank you so much for joining me this was a great week and my voice is getting better so we'll see you on Monday at 1030 and again we appreciate you we love you and we are just preaching love and happiness and don't forget all the things that love can do for you apart from just being the most powerful word on this planet love gives you happiness love gives you hope love makes you believe love gives you joy love is the greatest gift you can give to someone and give to yourself love gives you peace it gives you healing love makes the dying wait for you love makes you remember all the great things your mom and dad did for you love wakes you up from a coma that's how powerful it is love is attractive love is sexy and love energizes you so I'll leave you with that and I say if you love something set it free if it comes back it's yours if it doesn't it was never yours have a great weekend wherever you go to worship remember to stay prayed up believing 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 that whatever you're praying for you shall have it you shall receive it but you must believe you must have faith and you must trust God to deliver your petition so you must get that confidence in your spirit to understand and know and feel that whatever you're praying for no matter how big it is or how impossible it seems you can achieve that goal with the help of your mighty one Jesus keep that in mind as I say au revoir ciao and adios be blessed and stay prayed up until I see you again on Monday at 1030 thank you